Now, as we can see from the tactic, it is a 4231 El Turco Fenomeno uh, Custom Tiki Taka. I don't speak Turkish, so I can't really say what this is here. It's an attacking mentality in possession, fairly wide attacking width, pass into space, underlap on the left and the right, with focus down to the right and the left as well. So, quite nice to see that is. Shorter passing directness with a higher tempo, run at the defense, and low crosses in the final third as well. On the transition, counter press and counter with roll it out. And then out of possession, high line of engagement, a much higher defensive line, prevent short goalkeeper distribution with trigger press much more often and get stuck in as well with the tackling. If we have a look at the roles and who we have in these positions as well. So sweeper keeper on support with take more risks as an instruction there, a wing back on the right and on the left. The same instructions here. These have been added in, take more risks, dribble more, run wide with the ball, sit narrower, tackle harder and mark tighter. Those are additional instructions for both of those. Two ball playing defenders on defend with dribble more, tackle harder and mark tighter as additional instructions. Two centre midfielders on support with take more risks, dribble more, get further forward and move into the channels for both of these with tackle harder as well. An inside forward on the left and on the right with roam from position, sit narrower and tackle harder for both of these. A second striker or a shadow striker on attack with cross more often, cross aim near post, roam from position and to tackle harder with an advanced forward on attack in the line leading us for us. So take more risks, dribble more and to tackle harder as well. Now the first test is going to be with Manchester City. Hit the like button and subscribe. Now let's get into the episode. Now as expected, we have won the Premier League with Manchester City. Only by point as well though, 25 wins, 6 draws and 7 losses across the season. The best goal difference in the league with plus 48 and quite interestingly Tottenham finished in 2nd place and Arsenal finished in 8th place. Yeah, not a fantastic season for Arsenal there. Looking at the player stats, Erling Haaland scored 32 goals, topping the goal scoring records there. Average rating as well, Haaland with a 7.52. Kevin De Bruyne with 15 assists, Haaland with 10 prior the matches. With Edison, joint second with 13 clean sheets. Now, no one was involved in the yellow cards top three, which is a very nice change for the tactics that we have been testing. Now, looking at the team overview, we scored the most goals in the Premier Division with 84. None of these coming from corners. We've had the most shots. The fourth few shots against with 303. Best pass completion. We're not involved, nor for the most possession either. Not for tackles won. Triples made. We are second with 718 across the season. We joint fifth for most clean sheets with 13 and we're also second for fewest conceded with 36 as well. Now this is going to be the long screen. We are on the competition screen. Friendly Cup, we won that. Knocked out in the quarter final of the Champions League to Manchester United. Not, not good for us here. We won the UEFA Super Cup. Knocked out in the fifth round of the FA Cup to Arsenal. Knocked out in the third round of the Carabao Cup to Watford. And then English Community Shield, we were the runners up as well. So. I'll be honest, it's not it's not fantastic reading for Manchester City here. Let's have a look at the Premier Division and see how we performed in this. Obviously, we won the division. We lost to Liverpool first game of the season, lost to Manchester United and lost to Tottenham as well. So we lost three of our first four games. Not sure how we survived in this job, but we followed up with a 3-1 against Newcastle, a 4-1 against Arsenal, and then a nice, healthy run of victories here as well from December into middle of January, a 5-2 against Nottingham Forest. We've got our own back on Man United and Liverpool, both beating them 3-0, a 5-1 against Sheffield United. And then looking at the end of the season, I mean, I think we lost too many, if I'm being honest, across the season with Manchester City, but some good victories, another 5-0 against Burnley. And we finished off with a 5-1 against Forest and a 3-0 against Sheffield United. Looking at the squad, And the goal scored. Haaland scored 43 goals and got 10 assists across the entire season. Jeremy Doku with 15 and 5. Julian Alvarez 13 and 8. Bernardo Silva with 11 and 13. And De Bruyne got 8 goals and 21 assists. So a, a nice little test so far. We are now going to move on to Arsenal and let's see if we can do any better. And looking at the Arsenal result. We won the league, 89 points on the board, a lot better than the Manchester City result where we only got 81 points. 
29 wins, more than we did with Manchester City, two draws and the same seven losses as well. And now a plus goal difference of 76 with this team. Looking at the goal scored, however, Martinelli was third in the charts with 18 across the season. Interesting enough, James Madison is second with 20 there. Average rating, we got Bakoya Saka and Odegaard in a second and third place with 7.54 and 7.40. Odegaard with 19 assists across the season. We got no players, four player of the matches, clean sheets, but Tomiyasu is joint second on the yellow card list as well. Now, looking at how we performed as a team across the season, 127 goals scored with Arsenal. That's 40 more than we did with Manchester City. Got the most shots for as well. Third for fewest shots against with 316. Not involved with the best pass completion, but we are there for possession on this one. Sixth with 56% average. Most tackles won, we're not there. Eighth for most dribbles made. Sixth for most clean sheets. And we're not even involved in the fewest conceded. So, obviously, we scored 127 goals. And we conceded like probably 50 odd or so looking at this now all competitions this is where it's going to get a little bit tasty community shield we were runners up carabao cup we won that competition we beat tottenham 3-1 in the final fantastic for arsenal fans there in the fa cup we were runners up and we lost to liverpool 4-3 but the big one we won the champions league with arsenal absolutely fantastic stuff 2-0 victory over napoli in the final now looking at here, the goals, Gabriel Jesus got nine goals, top in the charts for Saka, getting third place with seven. Average rating was Martinelli, 7.93 across the season with six assists to his name as well. Very good performance in the Champions League here with Arsenal. In the semi-final, we beat Barcelona 8-2 on aggregate, 5-2 victory at the new Camp. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. In the quarter-final, a 4-3 victory over RB Leipzig, round of 16. A 3-2 victory over Salzburg. Okay, two Red Bull teams in two separate rounds. And if you have a look at the group stage, how did we perform? Six wins, one draw, 16 points. A fantastic achievement for this Arsenal team here. Now if you have a look at the schedule and how we did perform, we'll focus on the Premier League because we just had a little overrun of the Champions League there. Started off 6-1 victory against Sheffield United, a 3-1 victory against Liverpool, a 4-0 victory over Manchester United, a 4-0 against Man City and a 6-0 against Newcastle. Fantastic stuff. Yeah, we'll ignore the 5-1 loss to Tottenham at the early part of the season. But again, not many draws in this one. A lot of wins have come in. 5-0 against West Ham, 5-2 against Brentford, 5-2 against Burnley, 6-4 against Bournemouth. I mean, when we lose, we do lose though. I mean, a 3-0 against Chelsea isn't fantastic but going further down we got a revenge on Tottenham 3-1 6-2 against Villa 3-2 against Man City 7-0 against Luton a 6-2 against Burnley 5-1 against Brighton I mean it's definitely well prepared for this Arsenal team over the Manchester City team so Martinelli 30 goals 14 assists Jesus 30 goals and 6 assists Bukaya Saka, 25 goals, 14 assists. Smith Rowe, 21 goals and 15. Havertz, 16 and 16. Trossard, 15 and 13. Enketia, 13 and 3. Odegaard, 12 and 29 assists. Declan Rice getting 10 goals and 18 assists. Fantastic achievement with this Arsenal team. Next, we have Liverpool. Let's see how we get on. Now, this could be an even better result here. We won the Premier League with Liverpool, 29 wins, 6 draws and only 3 losses across the season. Second place Chelsea, very interesting to see there and third place Villa as well. Plus goal difference of 74 with 93 points. Goal scorers, Nunes with 19, so finishing third there. I mean Haaland has been consistent as our top goal, well, the top goal scorer in the Premier League here. With assists, McAllister is joint second with 12 across the season. We're not involved in the prior of the matches or the clean sheets, but Trent Alexander-Arnold is topping the yellow cards chart along with Virgil van Dijk as well. Looking at how we did perform as a team across the season, 107 goals scored with this Liverpool team. Most shots taken as well. That's another, what's that, 298 more than second place Manchester City. Four for few shots against. We're not involved in the pass completion, but we are in the possession with this one, 55% across the season. Most tackles won, we're not there. Sixth for dribbles made. Third for clean sheets. 
and fourth for the fewest conceded as well. Now onto the competition screen. Runners up in the Carabao Cup, we lost 2-1 to Chelsea in extra time. Runners up in the FA Cup, we lost 4-2 to Arsenal. However, Europa League, we won the Europa League. We beat Bayer Leverkusen 2-0 in the final. Luis Diaz topping the goal scoring charts in his competition with 12 goals. Salah third with ace. Salah and Diaz first and second in the average rating with six assists for Diaz. Five, Andrew Robertson, five player of the matches for Diaz as well. And Alisson joint top for clean sheets with six with Ibrahima Kanate getting five yellow cards. So we beat Leverkusen 2-0 in the final. We beat Roma 4-5-3 on aggregate in the semis. Quarterfinals, we faced off against Feyenoord and we beat them 8-1 over both legs. Round of 16, Galatasaray, a 7-2 aggregate victory. In the group stage, how did we get on here? Yeah, we won all six, 30 goals scored. Very, very nice achievement. Looking at the schedule and how we did perform in the Premier League. Obviously, we only lost three. So let's see how we did perform. And I think we didn't lose until we faced Tottenham in the well, Boxing Day as well. So a bit of a Christmas hangover for the team, maybe. Not as many big victories as we did have with the Arsenal one. But we got 3-0 against Brighton, 3-0 against Burnley, 5-0 against Everton. Fantastic Merseyside derby victory there for ourselves. And if we go further down, I mean good run of wins it's been very consistent with this tactic with this Liverpool team as well we beat Arsenal 3-2 beat Man City 2-1 Villa 4-1 Wolves 6-0 Brighton 4-0 yeah very very big wins here another 5-1 against Everton so yeah a bit disappointing if you're an Everton fan in this in this universe but a wonderful wonderful achievement here with Liverpool and let's see how we kind of do perform across the season so Salah with 29 goals and 11 assists. Nunez, 29 goals, 7 assists. Diaz, 21 goals, 14. Hotter, 29. Cody Gapko, 18 and 13. McAllister, 17 and 18. With Ibrahima Kanate as a centre-back in 13 goals and 1 assist. Fantastic achievement with this team. We have now got Manchester United to come up with. Let's see how we get on. And lastly, Manchester United, we've won the Premier League, 27 wins, 7 draws and 4 losses. A goal difference of plus 71 and 88 points on the board as well. We've won the Premier League with every team that we have used with this tactic as well. So yeah, El Turco, well done with the Fenomeno. Goals wise, Hernandez, or Fernandez, sorry, 21 goals, joint second in the Premier League. Bruno Fernandez, 7.45 rating. I mean, why is he second when he's got the exact same rating as Haaland? No idea. But for assists, Fernandez with 14 and Christian Eriksen with 13. Anana with 15 clean sheets. That must be a glitch. And yellow cards, Casemiro, yeah, back on form. And Rafael Varane as well in joint first position. Looking at the team overview, we scored 108 goals in the Premier Division. 20 more than second place Liverpool. 12 of these coming from corners as well. Most shots for, we're top there. Fifth for fewest shots against. Pass completion, we're not involved, but we are there with possession as well. Only Manchester City never got the possession stats with this tactic test. So 56% for Manchester United. We're not in there for most tackles won, nor for dribbles made. First time we're not on this list. We are joint second for clean sheets with 15 across the season. And we are third with 37 goals against. Third fewest in the Premier League. Now, looking at other competitions, Sadly, we haven't got any trophies other than the Premier Division. Champions League were knocked out by Leipzig in the quarterfinals. FA Cup knocked out in the fifth round to Arsenal. And in the Carabao Cup, knocked out in the quarterfinal to Bournemouth. Now if we look at the Premier Division and how we did perform across this competition here. Again, a fantastic start here. We didn't lose until Christmas again against Liverpool 1-0. So some big wins coming in here as well, looking at this. Obviously, a fantastic start to the season with a 2-0 victory over Newcastle. Beat Manchester City 4-1. Beat Wolves 4-1. Brentford 6-1. Burnley 6-0. Crystal Palace 7-1. Forest, we beat them 5-1. Sheffield United 6-2. We lost to Liverpool, 
but we did bounce back with a 5-2 against Fulham, a 6-2 against Arsenal. We lost 5-0 to Villa though. Not good to see, but again, Wolves got pumped 6-0, 10 goals scored against Wolves this season. And then, to be honest, we kind of petered out towards the end of the season, but yeah, the damage was already done. Fantastic achievement by this Manchester United team. Bruno Fernandes with 28 goals, 19 assists. Marcus Rashford, 19 goals, 16 assists. Garnacho with 17 and 9. Hoyland with 17 and 9. And Rafa Varane with 10 and 1. Now, looking at Diego Delo and Mason Mount, they got 15 and 14 assists. So there we have it. Fenomeno by El Turco. What a fantastic tactic. Now, I will say, I've only tested it with the top four in the Premier League. Will it work at lower down? I'm not fully sure with that one, but an absolutely fantastic tactic. Go check it out. The link is in the description below. If you'd like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you again for 500 subscribers. There's going to be some more videos over here as well. And I'll see you on the next one.